Here we go. <laughs> and here we are off. Lisa, how are you? Good to see you. I'm awesome. Good to see you. It's still so I'm... still winter in the mountains. We got another foot of snow this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Wow. Uh, year's flying. We're almost done with the first quarter. Uh, we're going to let everybody come in. We've got a whole bunch coming in here as we're as we're chatting. Uh, we're excited to be talking about you know, the unique, elevating your unique value proposition. We have some interesting things that we've done with clients that really help them create a real clear, concise, compelling value proposition. We're going to highlight a good three to four areas for you to work on in that space to help you and your business. My name's Dean Cottrell. I'm EVP of Brokerage and Team Consulting. Uh, I've got Lisa Picardo here. She works, uh, her and I run the team and brokerage consulting division. She's VP of brokerage and team. Uh, let's, you know, this is one of our, I call this our flash webinar. When Lisa and I do these webinars, and as you know, T3, we're running webinars every Wednesday. So if you sign up for these, uh, the topics change, actually the different level, the different divisions, like Lisa and I running brokerage and team uh, come in and, and talk about what's in our space, but we also have multiple other spaces as those you have been here before. So with that said, Lisa, anything you want to say before we launch into this exciting topic of, of value proposition? No, let's dive in. <laughs> dive in and as you're digging out of the snow, as you mentioned earlier. All right. So talking about elevating your unique value proposition, uh, enhancing it, how to separate yourself, how to differentiate yourself. Um, one of the first things uh, Lisa and I find when we work with brokerages is a lot of them don't have a sense of their brand. And I want to start there. We're going to start there, which is, you know, relative. It's like, hey, I thought this was about our value proposition. Well, part of this, and I do, in a, I do this also thinking about like March Madness, all right? I was trying to think of an analogy of how to put this in play. Now, so think about uh, March Madness. You've got all these basketball teams across the U.S., you know, they're competing to be the national champion. And sometimes organizations, you know, want to be that number one company in their market um, and they're, but they don't have their voice. So it's like five players on a university team, never shot a basket, never had anything, never coached. And then get on a court and they're like, hey, I want to become the best, the national champion. Well, you do, but you, there's some things that need to happen to get you to that level, right? And the same thing with organizations. And one thing we always say when working with companies is crawl, walk, run. So no matter where you are, you start heading in a direction. So as we hit on these really three, four key areas on this path, um, I'd encourage you to just think about no matter where you are, start moving in a better direction to help you get to where you ultimately want to be, whether that national champion, uh, in my analogy, or your market leader. So talking about Brandly, so what are your thoughts on that first step in brand and what do you see when working with brokerages and teams? Yeah, so it's interesting as when we do our annual business review and I look at, you know, I do a marketing review and I dive in and, you know, occasionally you'll hear me say like, they're having an identity crisis, right? Or I think the other side is that many people focus on all the same things, right? Like we have this, that, and the other, and, you know, we have training, we offer this, but they don't really talk about like their, you know, who, who are they, right? Like, what is their mission? What is their vision? You know, what are their company values? I actually did a deep dive on a company yesterday and I was so impressed. Like it was very clear to me, their value prop, right? From a total outsider, I mean, they really clearly articulated it. So I think that that's important. Um, one of the things that we do with our clients, we encourage them to take the brand archetype quiz and to de determine their Jungian brand archetype, right? Are they a sage? Are they a guy, girl next door? Are they an outlaw? Like, you know, what is that? And build everything that they're doing around that, right? And help their agents understand and to give some uh, color to Lisa's comments, when we talk about the archi uh, the archetypes, uh, Junging archetypes, there's 12 of them. And to give you some idea, like, and we're gonna give ones that really stand out, like Wall Street Journal, Lisa had mentioned Sage. They're in the Sage, we're all about information knowledge, all right? And that's where the Wall Street Journal places themselves. Geico, Liberty Mutual, they're in the jester area. They're all about having fun, this is how we communicate, and that's where they are, right? If you think of outlaw, what would you put in the outlaw segment there? What's a company that comes to mind? Well, Harley Davidson, right? Harley Most Davidson, right? I'm a motorcycle, so that comes to mind for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
So when you think about, so to hopefully this is resonating more with everybody, because when you talk about brand and we say this, when we're working with clients, you know, it's like the Atlantic Ocean, you know, you're not going to swim across it in one day. You're not going to get across. It's going to take time, but you you have to start crawl, walk, run, really get the sense because like Lisa said, if, if so many organizations are all over the map, like one day I'm going to gesture, the next month I'm decide I'm going to be a sage, I'm all about knowledge. The next day I'm going to move and be an outlaw. And you're all over the place. What happens is you're not your message is getting diluted. And this is what we're talking about, having a very clear, very concise, very compelling value proposition. If you're all over the map and you don't know your voice, who you are, what position, what place you want to come from when you talk, are you in what archetype, then that's something that it's not resonating. It frankly, it muddles your voice uh, into the marketplace. So that's, yeah, and part that's of that when we do the brand exercises, like who is your target audience, right? What, I mean, really determining who are you, um, and and you need to be able to articulate that to your agents, of course, and if they don't, and then the consumer too, right? To help you understand, like, why you? Why am I picking your company, your agents? Yeah. And there also one thing I'll throw out there, but because sometimes some people feel like, hey, this is not a true authentic, I want to be or my company is positioned as a royal, right? Like a high-end luxury brokerage. But I feel like me personally, as the owner, the leader, I'm not in that space completely. I'm also, you know, a little bit of a jester. I'm a little bit of a sage. I'm a little bit of whatever. So typically you have a primary and then you have a secondary, mm -hmm. but there's not, it's not a, you know, you're not schizophrenic. You're not jumping around all over all 12 of these things. So you really hone in on one and then maybe have a slight second one as a minor one. So that's the first step in really moving down a path to getting a clear, concise, compelling value proposition is first knowing who you are, what is the voice, where do you speak from, where do you come from as you go out to your market and you talk about those things. The right. next step for this in this process is going into a competitive assessment. And that's we talked about this you, a little bit on our last um, webinar, right, Dean? We talked a little bit about the new business models and all of that, but as I mentioned, like, you know, a lot of companies offer the same things, but why are you different, right? So really diving in and doing both a SWOT, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities on you, right? On your company and on your four biggest competitors and any of the larger companies on here, what a great exercise for your managers to do, right? Assign this to them, have them go in deep, right? What are the tools? What are the systems? You know, what sort of training and support do these companies offer? You know, what is their comp plan? Like, you know, why, what makes you different, right? Like, why do, why is an agent, do I want to come to you? Or why as a consumer, do I want to work with you versus somebody else? Yeah, I would look at it both of those ways as a consumer to Lisa's point and as an agent for recruiting retention purposes really to hone in on that value proposition for you when you're doing the competitive assessment. So the SWOT, the SWOT analysis is excellent. It's one you definitely, has, and if you have multiple leaders, you have if you have multiple offices, leaders in your organization, one of the great things is have them do the exercise and have them present to their peers. Um, that's something, and we actually, this is an exercise we encourage and with our insiders, our clients that we've had for a long time that we work with, we have them do it, we recommend and we have, work with them on an annual basis to update that competitive assessment and see where that stands. One other thing I want to highlight here is because as you do the competitive assessment, you look at your value proposition. Some organizations, frankly, are like, you know what? I don't have a lot of uniquenesses. Um, you know, I have, I, I, I sell houses, we recruit agents, we help them grow their businesses, help them be successful. And as my comments come across, I'm not trying to minimize any of that. That's also very valuable, right? Very important. But sometimes it's just the energy. It's how you amplify these messages. Yeah, we do this and everybody else does those things, but we do it better. All right. And then you want to accentuate how you do things better. And you not only want to do that um, to the market and to the world, but you also want to do it to your current agents. So they have that. It becomes part of your calling. You know, calling card is, you know, we sell homes faster. We sell them for more money. Uh, we have a higher per person productivity. Whatever those bullets are, whatever those, you know, three, four, five bullets are that really are separated that you really put your hat on, that's where you put your hat on and say, you know, we own this in this market. What are those areas that you own and that you're passionate about? I think um, one of the not, biggest things, find them, right? Right. I think one of the biggest misses in talking about value proposition is people throw out all the features, right? Oh, we yeah. have this. Yeah. It's like, okay, but 
you know, you're missing the line and, and everything should always say what this means to you is right. Yeah. Like really close that gap. Like, okay, great. You know, we have training, you know, for agents or, you know, we offer, you know, we offer professional photography for all of our sellers. Well, what this means to you is, you know, that they're going to see your home in a better light and that ultimately we're going to get a higher sale price because of the professionalism of staging your house or things like that, right? So what does what this means to you is really focus on that. Yeah, one of the one of if you really want to go down this path and do a really awesome job to really create a clear, concise, compelling value proposition. It's a multi-step process where you actually, depending on the size of your organization, start as a founder, as an owner that you probably are as you're on if you're on this call with us. Think about what are those SWAT, what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then work your way also to if you have agents, then talk to your, of course, talk to your agents. If you have leaders that are managers, senior leaders, ask each layer of your organization those same questions. And then also then go to your, your agents, but then go to a buyer and a seller, get a couple buyers and sellers, talk about what is the value to you of our organization? What did you see as value? What, what were the values and strengths and the weaknesses, anything mm -hmm. that you see from your vantage point? And what ends up happening is when you distill this down and we do this exercise, it's actually powerful because what will happen is you'll see some common, common discussion topics and points that come through on all layers of your organization, all the way down from the consumer, to your agents, to your leaders, to the, even the founder and owner. And that's when you really are, can, that become, that's because that's when it becomes authentic, true, authentic. It's from the core, everything involved, everybody involved. It is something that is something you can feel very proud about and what you're able to do and resonate with. So that's something we encourage you to do those multiple layers, no matter how, how many layers you have, whether it's two layers or five layers or whatever it is, do that exercise, really document all that, and then hone in on that. We talked about this, Lisa, what, yesterday, about even utilizing like a chat GBT or something and going through it and seeing what commonalities and what things come out and even using some AI out there, having yeah. some fun with this exercise. So I want to touch on, obviously, um, the compensation lawsuits are top of mind. And one of the biggest things on value proposition right now is is we're talking about agents and they need to promote their value prop. And I was on a call last week, a webinar, a uh, thousand watt did, and, and they kind of called out the industry. Brian sort of called out the industry and said, Hey, you guys, we've done a horrible job at telling people what we do. Right. Yeah. And, and even that, like, you know, as I do these buyer brokerage assessments and I look at companies' websites, there's nothing under, if I look at the buy page, it's a property search. It doesn't talk about anything about all of the value that we bring, right? I mean, the usually, you know, sell with us talks about, you know, all the things we're going to stage and we're going to professional photography and we're going to do video and we're going to do all these things, right? But as a, as a buyer, think about all the things that your company does and your agents do, right? Really dive in, get deep in, you know, that you're doing far more than show, you know, finding them a house. They can find their house themselves online, right? But all the pieces, look at a, look at the contract and the 42 areas of negotiation that you're going to help them negotiate, right? So, you know, agents and companies help your agents really outline their value proposition as an agent. Yeah, it's a great exercise to work with your agents on and work through. I used to call some trainings whiteboard trainings, meaning you don't have to spend a ton of time figuring out what the agenda is. You can start putting stuff on the whiteboard. And to Lisa's point, I think Brian did a great job um, when he talked about, you know, on the buy side, the value seems to be like, oh, we're going to open the door. We're going to help people through a process. Um, but we're not really there's not a lot of value that's presented or, you know, resonates on that buy side. And definitely need to start really as a tactical thing. When we talked about tactics just a minute ago, prior to getting on this call, what are some tactical things that you're doing to help position your organization, position your agents to really win the day, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the changes coming about? So I love with that, to, he me, mentioned, let me just bring up one other thing. He mentioned that the average couple knows approximately 13 agents between them, right? So again, like think about it. If every you know seller or buyer that you talk to knows thirteen agents, like why should they choose you, right? Because you know I close more business, and what this means to you is you know I get a higher average sale price, whatever those things are that you do that are different. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. And that's something too, while we're on the buyer agent and where we're on that space and kind of in this one little piece of the conversation and talking about that side of the value prop, um, we do have something that Lisa and we're doing a deep dive on, on buyer broker assessments on evaluating everything and your materials and helping you get share best practices. So reach out if you have any interest in that, but really the last stage on this process, we're talking about really what is that unique value prop? How are you going to enhance it and amplify it? Things like that. Again, we tar started talking about brand. Um, we're going to, Chris, in a minute here, is going to plug in for you a link that's going to take you to a site, which is going to allow you, it's Kate Pot Putnam, there he did right there. Um, and that's going to allow you to take a quiz, a free quiz. It's going to give you some insight in what is your archetype. It gives you some also, there's some videos on that website that will go into detail about people, uh, movie stars, who falls in what category, um, also companies, organizations, and how they position themselves in key areas. Then from there, we talked about competitive assessment, really going out and looking at your competitors, do a SWOT analysis, depending on you know, how big of an organization is. Uh, if you have a large organization, we encourage the peers to get involved in, in work and leaders to get involved and do that type of work. And then we said, all right, start looking at multiple layers, start distilling down what are some commonalities? What are you hearing that you could really amplify as some of that true core value that's part of your brand that could be that clear, concise, and compelling uh, value part of your value proposition. And the last thing I'm going to come to here, Lisa, the last thing we're going to come to is really talk about amplifying that message. How are you going to take that? So many organizations that we'll work with, you know, they'll do this work and then, then it sits there, right? In a drawer yeah. or it doesn't really get amplified. So what are some of your thoughts? What are some ways that you could suggest or throw out to everybody on this call or watching this recording or how they can amplify that key area of who they are as a brand to the market? Well, certainly they can, I mean, you need to amplify it on social, right? I think one one of the mistakes that so many companies make, right, is I go on their social and it's like, we just listed, we just sold, right? There's nothing else about like, why them, you know? I mean, how about some stories and testimonials? Like rather than saying we just sold a house, maybe have a seller do a video about like why it was great working for that. Client testimonials are great. Agent testimonials are great, right? Applying for awards. Like I love, I mean, there's a lot of local awards, best places to work. And, you know, of course there's our mega 1000. I mean, there's a bunch of different awards out there and an innovator award, you know, we're running a fusion website award, like anything like that to amplify the message about why your best company. Best place to work. You know, yeah. uh, that's one everybody has, right? So best yeah. place to work, things like that. I do love the case studies. You can actually take a process, whether it's talking about agents for recruiting retention, or it's about consumers, buyers out there, sellers out there, like Lisa had mentioned, and then it's taking them through a process. You know, the idea, like here's who we are in our market and how we stand out and how we do an excellent job. It's part of our core. It's part mm -hmm. of our value proposition. And here's a customer client who came to us. It's Jim, Jim Bim or, or you know, Sue Smith or whatever the name is. And she then provides that, here we came to this organization here was our challenge here's what we end up this is what they delivered and here's the end result and where we sit today and if you can get that on video to lisa's point that by itself is very very powerful so when you hone in this whole conversation about your value proposition and you really distill it down to these three four five key areas that you want to be number one in or you want to separate yourself or you want to be known for that, you want to be known for right in your market with your agents, you want to be proud. You're going to walk in and say, these are the things that we're so proud of. Get some case studies from your agents talking about those things from your customers, your buyers, your sellers, your clients. They're talking about these things. Amplify that and then put that out to the market mm -hmm. on your website, on social, like Lisa says. Amplify those messages and let it resonate. And that's a circle. That's actually a flywheel. That's a flywheel because not only are you that then keeps you honed in on what that value proposition is, who you are, how you separate yourself. And then clients come to you, they come through that maze, they, they work through the process, they end up giving you a case study and it just feeds itself. It, it ends up becoming a nice flywheel for you. And I think one of the things, you know, I had a client last week and she's like, I am not the person that wants to put numbers out there. I'm not like, I want to be number one. I want to be number one. You know, that's not the thing. But this particular client, it's all about the good they do in the community. 
right? So it's giving back and their charitable work and the agents are so involved. And, and maybe that's who you are, the caregiver, right? Brand archetype, right? About really, you know, making a difference in your community. So everybody's different. Just really dial in who, who you are, right? And help your agents dial in why them, you know, three to five things. It doesn't have to be a laundry list, right? Three key things that make you different, you special, and why to choose you. Yeah, why you're what you're passionate about, all these things. Let's have some fun. I know this is work. Mm -hmm. Lisa and I both ran real estate operations organizations for a long time. We've been in those chairs. We understand it. You know, we see through that lens. So try to have as much fun as you can. This is a great exercise, frankly, in bringing your agents involved. They can actually go through this process themselves. I'd encourage you to share that Kate Putnam website, for example, and that quiz with your agents. Let them go through that process. One mm -hmm. thing to just uh, one thing we can share with everybody, Lisa, because there's sometimes uh, people are like, well, if they're a if they're a gesture and I'm a sage brand or I'm a girl guy next door brand or I'm this or that, do I then lose them? Do they then migrate to another brokerage? Um, and what would you say to that, Lisa? No, definitely not. No, definitely not. Yeah, no. they can still just use their you. brand too, but, right? I mean, it might be different than yours. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, everyone's not going to fall on the same line. Yeah. So Chris did put the link in there. He also put a link in there to schedule time with us. And you can always email us, dean at, at t360.com or lisa at t360.com. And we're here to help. We know it's challenging times and, you know, the market is challenging and times are changing. And, you know, we're here to help in whatever way we can. Yep. Reach out if we can help in any way. Um, wish you guys all the best. Have a great spring. And we'll look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Take care.